conservatives are gathered here in Halifax to come up with a plan for next year's election to get ready for it. But they were rocked off their feet a bit yesterday when Maxime Bernier quit the party. So how is the party's leadership dealing with this new challenge? Earlier, I spoke to Lisa Ray, the Conservative Party's deputy leader. Thank you so much, Ms. Ray. Nice to see you again. I it's appreciate it. Be here. Welcome to Halifax. Thank you very much. I love it here. I went to school here. Um, I wanted to start off by asking you about something Mr. Shear said yesterday following Mr. Bernier's announcement, and that was that essentially his decision was to the benefit of, of Mr. Trudeau. He decided to give him a better shot in the next election. Yeah. Is that kind of an admission that your party will have a harder go, given what happened yesterday? I don't think so. I think there's so many variables that are still out there. Max has indicated that he's going to form a new party. He still has to attract candidates to the party. So whether or not it's going to be that easy for the Liberals, the reality is, is that it is a division in the Conservative vote. And you have to take that seriously. So if Max thinks he's helping the Conservative cause, he's not. All he's doing is making it easier for Mr. Trudeau. Had you talked to him at all prior to that decision? I hadn't, and I'm really disappointed. Um, I consider Max a friend, and we got along very well during the leadership. We sat with each other in the House for a long time. I knew that there was disagreements with respect to policy, but I didn't think it was to the depth that we're witnessing right now. I thought he would come talk to his caucus colleagues, listen to what's happening on the floor, and move on with us, but I guess that's not what happened. How do you combat that potential split of the vote? So first of all, I don't think it's going to be anything along the lines of a split. A split infers that it's going to be 50-50. I think this will just be siphoning off a few votes here and there. If he's able to put enough candidates out there, um, I would be making sure that we, we have the right candidate and that we're working very, very hard in the ridings, that we only had about a 5% um, win or loss in last time because that's where you can impact that conservative vote because if the other the vote's going the other way for everyone else, we want to make sure the conservative vote sticks and goes to our candidate. Does it change the game plan substantially, do you think, going into the next election? I don't think it changes anything. I think it's uh, it's... We have to be aware of the fact that there's always, let me put it this way, there's always a libertarian candidate that runs in my riding and he gets about 1% of the vote. But when we do debates, he's oftentimes on the same side as I am with respect to policy. I don't know where Mr. Bernier's new party is going to fit into those kinds of local debates. Um, but, you know, the gentleman libertarian received 1% of the vote. And if you are dealing with another conservative type of party, that's another percent that may come from you. So you start to worry about that. You work doubly hard. But in terms of policy platform, no, we're going to run on exactly what we've been building towards for the last two years. I want to ask you about developing policy and platform and something you said in your speech last night. I just want to read an expert saying, excerpt, I'm sorry, we accept all kinds of different ideas in our party. And if you're like me, you've already spent time this weekend speaking to fiscal hawks, social conservatives, social moderates, red Tories, libertarians, law and order conservatives, and all manners of people between. Because in this party, this party, we're actually allowed to disagree with one another. I wonder if, I, I wanted to ask you, okay, it's one thing in the context of this party and, de and developing policy going forward. Do you have to at some point, and does Mr. Scheer or the, yourself among the leadership, have to make a call on some of the more controversial issues, like the ones Mr. Bernier brought up, so that a concrete image is presented in the next election to the public writ large versus just the party? 100%. So what's happening here in terms of policy is people are having strong debates upon what they feel should be in our policy documents in our constitutions. And what you'll see is a debate. There is a yes line, there is a no line. There are speakers at both. People hold up their cards and they vote and we move on. When we get to the point of developing platform, that's where the leader and the leadership makes the decision on what is going to be in the platform, what cohesive plan we're going to put towards our election hopes and our campaign to show Canadians that we're ready to govern. And that's different from what happens here. You, As we used to say in government, what happens here informs our policy but doesn't necessarily make up the platform. And it's part of gauging and judging what the country needs at a certain time. How important is that platform and, and what's articulated in it in combating what proved to be uh, you know, a, a somewhat popular narrative created by the Liberals in the last election around issues like the ones that just came up because of Maxine Bernier? Yeah, it's very interesting. I mean, the Liberals made um, hundreds of platform promises in their last campaign. Um, we made some as well, but what we're going to do this time is we're going to be very clear, concise, direct 
we will tell people what we're going to deliver on and then we will deliver on it and the contrast for us with the liberal with the liberals is they made some very big economic promises in their platform in 2015 and they broke them all they broke them all and we're going to say here are our promises we've thought through them carefully these are doable this is what we're going to do and if you elect us you will know exactly what you're going to be getting what about on issues like diversity, like immigration, um, how do you, uh, I mean, what kind of view do you want to see articulated, I guess, at the end of the day, going into the next election? Because you know that that is what the Liberals are going to be talking about, sure. and they are already, right? And and how do you prevent giving them, you know, handing them a gift like the one Maxine Bernier just did? So first of all, um, the Conservative Party believes in immigration. And what you heard Michelle Rampel talk about is the fact that people have to be given the comfort that in immigration is going to be fair, it's going to be orderly, it's going to be compassionate. And if you allow for any kind of fear with respect to people worrying about the numbers of people coming to this country, then you're going to have a situation where there are going to be people saying that we don't want any immigration. But that's not our position. Our position is we want immigration and we are going to do a year of consultation so that people will understand our point of view and there'll be no secrets. And most importantly, I will not allow or accept the Liberal government trying to say what our policy is through their interpretation of they want what they want us but to say. But when they hear people like Mr. Bernier or Ms. Leach in the, in the race before talk about values tests or too much diversity, sure. is it making it easy for that kind of narrative to develop? Kelly's not running in the next election. Max is not running for the Conservatives in the next election. Why is it still a Conservative issue? It's not. Our party is very clear on where we stand. You'll hear me communicate it. You'll hear Michelle communicate it. You'll hear our leader communicate it tonight. And those who disagree with that, they're no longer in our party or they will no longer be running for us. What about the grassroots, though, who have, have expressed some support, at least for the idea of discussing more about right. that stuff? And we think that is exactly what should happen. More discussion about what our plan for immigration is and making sure that we're focusing on the economic well-being of the country. That's what people want to hear because we believe in immigration. I spoke at length last night about the importance of growing up in, uh, in an economically um, difficult area but was very rich with immigration and how well it turned out. Okay. I'll leave it there. Thanks a lot, Ms. Rate. Appreciate Thanks, your time. Gosh, nice to see you. Thank you. Thank you.